Well, let's get started. Good morning. Uh, welcome to the Graham's Farm Conservation Center. How many of you have never been out here before? Everybody's been here? Good. I like to hear that. Um, I like new visitors too, though. Uh, my name is Mike Stegman, director of the Marshall County Conservation Board, and in the previous years we have done uh, fly tying seminars with Dean Elder through the years, and, and we've had great turnouts for, for uh, uh, his time uh, donated to us and, and showing his expertise, not only with the, just the fly tying, but his knowledge of aquatic uh, insect life, because he's duplicating, you know, actual uh, live creatures uh, that, that exist where he fishes and that the fish consume. Uh, but this year I, I had an idea, I thought, well, let's expand off the fly tying and get into some other lure making uh, aspects in, in, in hopes of enticing you to uh, either get started or continue on if you already, you already do it uh, to help with some cabin fever in the middle of winter here. Uh, what I'm going to do today is demonstrate uh, my techniques for replicating old lures, antique lures that are not available commercially anymore. Um, I can't sell them because there's still copyrights on them, uh, but they're my go-to lures uh, primarily for bass and northern. Uh, and again, I keep losing these baits and I can't buy new ones, so I, I decided to get into making my own. Also with us today is Jim Wiggins. Um, He's got uh, primarily targeting bass lures again today, um, and I'll, I'll just let him talk about what he's going to do. We're going to do this concurrently, so when I get done with a little introduction here, uh, you can split up and go to whatever station you want, uh, and, and we'll answer your questions. It might get a little noisy in here, but we're going to talk again about uh, airbrushing, uh, where do you get your supplies, um, and finished coats, things like that. So. Uh, if you don't get our newsletter, I've got some extra copies on the table over there, and if you'd like to sign up for it, uh, you can either get hard copy or get it emailed to you. Fill that out on the sign-up sheet over there. And what else? I think that's about it. We've got my son and daughter with me today. They've both helped with uh, lure making before. And uh, a couple pictures I've got there that show that they do work. Um, I guess with that, uh, we'll just go ahead and get started and split up, drag chairs over. You can come around behind the tables, look over our shoulders at what we're doing, ask questions. Um, if you want to bump around to each station and, and ask the same questions, we'll answer, we'll answer it repeatedly. So, um, Any questions from you guys before we actually get started with the, with the, uh, with the show? All right, I guess with that, Dean, you have anything to add before we get started? Jim? All right, split up, go wherever you want, drag your chairs over, uh, observe, and, and we'll go from there. We've got uh, uh, Craig Schwartz with us from uh, Mick TV out at the community college, uh, putting together programs for us, so uh, you might be able to see yourself on TV coming up shortly here. Thanks for coming. See, this is actually the collar that you would buy yeah. for that tool that I talked about. I don't use it, so. But this is what they stretch up. What they actually use is a ballpoint pen, you know. They take the guts out of the ballpoint pen. Right. And they'll run this, they'll stretch this out like this. Just say this is a ballpoint pen. They'll stretch that over that pen okay. to make it bigger around. Yeah. Then they pull this skirt through that tube like this. Yeah. And then they take the this on one side and they grab the tube to where the end comes to there and they'll pull that rubber band off onto this and then they'll just they'll be hanging there just like this with the rubber band around. This will be, I don't have one of these tools because I don't use it, but this will be in the middle. It has, has all this bundled up like this. Okay. So then you actually, a lot of guys just carry these. I have a lot of no boaters. They'll carry a lot of tackle. They use this same thing. They'll have a bunch of these skirts already made up with this on there, and they just thread this on, and they pull it up over the thing. And it's the exact same thing when you're done. Okay. It'll look just similar to this. Right. I don't like the rubber bands because they don't last very long, and a lot of times when you start catching fish, they start pulling this off. This will start falling off, and then pretty soon you don't have anything on your. So if you get going, you got. I got one black and orange, and I got to use her all day long. Right. Rubber band's not going to be good. Yeah. 
Okay. Plus, I can use this for five, six, eight, ten. You're going to lose this jig before that skirt's going to fall off. I see. That's the reason I like to tie my stuck skirts on. Same thing I do on a spinner base. Exact same thing. Now, I don't pour my spinner base. I buy all my spinner base already poured for me because they, I, I spend way too much time messing around with these. This is one hard thing to pour for some reason. So I buy them, paint them white, and paint them whatever colors you want. Uh, uh, this, and that's just, just basically the same thing. Same thing I just got done with. And most most companies that produce this stuff do the rubber bands because I think it's cheaper for them. So that I don't. I just don't care to. I just don't care to uh, have the rubber bands. Right. So we got. I got like a chartreuse head there. I like to lay out my patterns a lot. I like two. I like two skirts. I got about thirty-five little rubber strands in there. And let's see. We got uh, one top. Let's use a little bit of. Let's use a little bit of this to I always like a little. I always like to add just a little bit of color on the. Just to kind of define the top and the bottom. Mm -hmm. So this is the technique I showed you. If you wanted the top and bottom, I'll start this baby underneath. See like that. Mm -hmm. I don't wrap that one. I want to keep it on the seam. And I'll throw the I'll throw one on one wrap. Keep it a little kind of here straightened out a little. We'll do another wrap here. I like this. Get them about in the middle. And it's the same thing. I always try to see how the thread's there. I always try to wrap towards the head my next my next layer. On my spinner baits, I only go two unless I want the skirt to flare. And I'll just keep going. If I want the skirt to flare out really long, I'll make this about a say something like that. You know, just cinch your tight or you know that overhand deal. It's just basically the same. And a lot of times when I've got, I have in my boat, I'll have mini uh, I've got I don't tie so then you just kind of see how the skirt, see how the skirt flares out away from the bait more. Yeah, yeah. That's because I made that thicker, thicker deal. More wraps. Yeah. yeah. And uh, sometimes if you want it to flare more, take this and split that skirt again. Mm -hmm. Take the bottom side, and then we'll I'm cut some of this really short. And that's oh, that'll really flare out there. Yeah. Okay. See, it's the longer the strands are, that see they'll they'll have a tendency to hang sure. skirt the closer to the bait. Yeah. The shorter the strands, further away from the bait this way. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you want to fish that that way. You'll have a the advantage of that is you'll have your piece of plastic trailer on there. You'll get to see more of your plastic trailer. Plus, this gives it a more buggy look, I think. So you got there's several ways to do it. I carry about 10 or 15 already rigged up. Then I have my copies of everything. You know, so say I want to try something different. You just have a clevis, which slides on. So I've got a box on that one, I'm going to have to get on. Slide that on. And say we want to have a small gold just laying there. And you got your, so that'll spin your blade when it's in the lake. So, now, what we do now is these are lures, like I said, you can use them like a Zara Spook, right on, they'll right on the surface. Mm -hmm. But if I don't put this yeah, stuff in, which true. are called micro balloons, well, this is what I makes them buoyant. Back up and we can kind of and, lose, but yeah, crappies get it on the trees a little bit. 
So you can, that's the same, but I do. Like Again, trial and error. Depends on how. Big look in it, you know, so. And you don't well, sneeze when this, because this is. <laughs> get my air over long. Yeah. Mean, just several layers. I think they're, it's real I fine fiberglass. Yeah. And uh, uh, take about yeah. three scoops for these particular lures that I'm making. I don't pour my own base anymore because it's just, yeah, I can buy them for 15 more cents and just buy them. And what I'll do is take one and these all the ones I can here and just, you know. Put one in first. I buy all these little eyes. And then mix that with the micro balloons to get a little kind of a paste going here. Yeah, I come back with a smaller, uh, smaller nail or toothpick. Just put one on side nine. Yep. Get one. Yeah. Yep. And, uh, so it's it's a pretty good paste right now. Yeah, you can. Then when you put your other, as time as you want, bring in that. Your other end. I just actually I just bought those at Walmart. I've been looking at them. And I just bought these, so I've really used them one time, but they're actually pretty nice because. Get it all mixed up real good. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Pour it in. If you can hold it, pick it up. How long is that tear to rush dry out? 10 minutes. Oh, probably not. The bottom side. You may not have quite so a bit of you when I got at home. Mike's got some over there. I can have a, you know, those it's getting close. Yeah. You do in a bath, bathtub. It's got like I said, it'll expand a little bit. You know, you ever seen on? I can't remember the name of that. I blew. Yeah, I tore that apart. That's what I used. I'll, I'll have it in a little square frame. And hold it up against there. Spray over that. When you take it off, you make little scales outside. Anyway, when that's dry, what it'll look like. When you have enough material in there, it comes out the top. That's what it's going to look like. You all different. Then, with the Dremel tool, sand them smooth. Well, what I'm using now, if I don't use, what I use is this. Use the Dremel tool to get off your real high points. Three tech wicked color. And then a water bay. So I got. Didn't you know, bring any with me, but I use. I've got some. It, it's gonna be messy, so do it, do it somewhere outside in your garage or basement where you've got. I don't care if it gets dirty. And then I'll take. Uh, it actually just protects the thing. Just some 120 grit sandpaper, smooth it off the rest of the way. We'll probably lose the baby for you. But then if you have any blemishes in there. Uh, just, I've got some two-part epoxy well, again at home. It's, it's uh, like a clay. So anyway, you can fill off your blemishes, and then uh, with, again, with the Dremel tool, I've got real small drill bits to start with your holes to insert your, your hardware. When you use an airbrush, you just you don't need much paint at all. It's so thin the color the color layers. And this one, you know, you look at it from your distance, you think it's black, but you come and look at it up close. And you can see it, the, the layering effects in there. And we just got it darker and darker. You know, we've actually got scales in on this. And again, it just depends on what lake you're fishing, what what lures. If it's sunny, um, and I've heard bright days you use bright colors, dark days you use dark colors. But. Put a little super glue on that to set the newer ones. Set those eyes <coughs> on there. Now by tying that on the top of the hook, when we fish this, the weight's going to make it turn over in the water, so it'll be fairly weedless. Okay, that's what you're making right now. Yeah. Instead of going through the water like this, where it can catch, that weight will make it run through the water. The little tail is just a tractor. Wire? It's just a tinsel. Mm -hmm. No, it's a. I'll sit up there. And just a tinsel. All that yeah, stuff came from Red Hubden 50, 60 years ago. Brandon, right the judge. <laughs> and I haven't figured out the exact way of placement on them. Yeah. So I don't know if it's too far forward or too far back. This is kind of like swimming and riding a bicycle. It's not as good enough to be comfortable. To this point, we've got a light 
I'll you learn to have a fairly a soft touch, little, uh, but I'm holding our thing that, that material yeah, against the shank of the head. Clinches it with your different uh, uh, We work out of our basement. We don't have uh, that's pretty cool. Uh, yeah. ventilation. And snip it off. Uh, they use two different types of feathers. This is more of a dry fly feather because it doesn't have webbing in it. Down in here you've got that soft, soft area. Out toward the tips it's stiff. And well, that'll actually, kind of if you're together, building a dry fly, it'll yes. stand up on the water. That'll pull it up off the water. So whatever colors you want. Yes, I did. Wire goes through the pussy strand. We will let you do that I was telling the boys, this is my go-to fly. If I'm fishing a farm pond, this will catch bluegills. This is really a crappie fly. For some reason, it just catches crappies. That's and good. I, There's I, nothing wrong with that. I think it looks a lot like a, a little minnow, you know, a little bait fish. This is what they call a whip finish. There's a lot of ways to do this, but we want to tie a knot here at the front of the hook range, secure everything. And really all that is is a bunch of overhand knots. And then, just to be sure that that knot doesn't come undone, you put a little touch of glue there. I'm going to have that stand up. That'll be the wing. And this is what they call moose mane. This is off a moose. Is that what makes the tie expensive, the materials you use? Yeah, it can be. Some of it's pretty expensive, but it'll last forever. Yeah. You don't need it. You don't need it every day, and if you're, you know, uh, deer hair is readily available, and pheasant feathers, and uh, rabbit hide, muskrat hide, so a lot of it is yeah, not expensive at all. The moose would be a little more rare. Yeah, they don't have them around here. But a guy like Mike, you know, might have some. If I need something, lots of times I just go out to the taxidermy show and they'll have a piece. Oh, I buy a little thing. How'd you get into this? Oh, I have a lot of bad habits. Well, are you self-taught? Yes and no. Um, if you go back, uh, after the war, there was a judge here, Bob O'Brien, and a barber, Red Hubden, and then other people. They were fly fishermen, and uh, they they had a little drink and eat club called the Die Hearts. And then uh, through the junior college, they had a fly tying class. And this would have been back in the early 60s. Ron Fisher, Ron Fisher Furniture, he was an instructor. And uh, from there, uh, it just developed. Uh, I got a friendship with Red, and I'd go to his house back and forth. And uh, I had got some merit badges in scouting for fishing, and uh, so one thing led to another, and I was a founding member of the Hawkeye Fly Fishing Club, and uh, it's just experience. 
Is there any difference in tying flies then and tying flies now? Well, a lot of materials are different because then I think almost all of your materials were the real thing, where today so much of it is synthetic. For instance, you know, this sort of stuff, this can, this can emulate pheasant tail or peacock pearl or whatever. It comes in a million different colors. And uh, they have colored wires now. Instead of the old copper wire, they have black, they have red, they have insect green, they have blue. Uh, it just goes on and on and on. It's become a real business. Wapsi Fly Company is the largest supplier of fly tying materials in the world. That guy's from Amana, and he bought the Wapsi Fly Company from a guy in Independence who moved to Arkansas, and now it's become the biggest in the world. A lot of Iowans are in uh, this business as a business. How much chance do you get to use your flies? Well, whenever I go to a local farm pond, that's all I use. Yeah, that's the majority of my fishing. I like Northeast Iowa. We fish Wisconsin every year. I try to fish Colorado if I can. Okay, here we go. We're going to wrap this apple on, and this fly is called a parachute. So that post. Tie our hackle around the post. I've done several, 15 or 20 different. And each turn goes under the other turn. For what I do, it's a Bob Smith call. I've never heard the company until I just have to run on the town. I'll tell them all sorts of stories about the site offerings. Everybody knows Tim. Rod building the fire to get the fish to hard and everything. Well, this would catch a bluegill or a crappie or a trout or whatever. You kids do a lot of fishing? Yeah. Before I make the plastic, I do. So I'm some chocolate. Okay. Because that one, my daughter loves it. She always gets it first, and I do. <laughs> My mom would think well, maybe she has the better lines. What's that? Maybe she has the better lines. Yeah, I'm not too old. I already have to. Now, the surface tension on the water and the, the feathers in a horizontal plane will hold them. So that's what I got, the product. Jacob. Jacob. Yeah, uh, get on but the water quality, the muddier it gets, for some reason, the darker, you know. Yeah, and that, and it's muddy it's water is a real, a real bright color and dark yeah. water. Yeah. You threw that in a dark, in a dark room. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Uh, or a dark background. Yeah. 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 But your outline, yeah. I've seen yeah. on videos, yeah. but that outline of that bait's yeah. not there. Yeah. You can see the color, but the outline of the bait's here. Can you make one? Right. 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 Right.